This is Mark Bell from Supertraining.tv, Supertraining Gym, the strongest gym in the West. I'm going to share with you guys today some raw benches from the March Madness meet. And I want to point out a couple of things that went on on this uh, day on the bench press. Something to point out real quickly, we have Katie Hogan right here. Very important, celebrity guest appearance. Notice the short shorts. Um, let's see, is there anybody else to point out that's worth anything? Not really. Oh, but we do have we got Katie Hogan's mom, the inventor of Katie Hogan, right here. So that's pretty cool. Other than that, everybody else is kind of worthless. Let's roll the tape and let's see what's going on here. These wraps that I'm wrapping up nice and tight around my wrist are going to be called gangster wraps, and they're going to be available to HowMuchYouBench.net very soon. Um, I've been wearing them for a while, and uh, I'm now going to make them available to everybody else. Ooh, we have another celebrity guest here in the background, Brandon Old Bird Dog Lily, uh, a.k.a. the man that once met Mark Bell. And uh, let's go over this bench setup, though. Let's check this out because we don't get a chance to do this enough uh, here at the Power Project. So first thing I like to do, this is my own preference on the bench press. It's not something I always teach everybody else, but this is my own preference and the way I like to do things. I lay completely flat on the bench to start. And what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to grab the bar firmly and I'm going to then start to set up my upper back, my mid to upper back. Uh, before I do that, what you can't see here is I'm setting up my feet. So, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to pinch my shoulder blades together and I'm going to try to take my shoulders and tuck them into my back pocket, as I like to say. So here we go. Let's watch this and let's uh, kind of see how this unfolds. We'll put it in slow motion so you can see what's going on. That's the uh, immortal Jesse Burdick handling the lift off there. And see how I shoved my, my sh shoulders down towards my butt. The key on that is to not move your lower body a whole lot and leave your feet locked in. So feet are locked in and my lower body's not going to move a ton. I mean the hips are going to move, um, but I'm really trying to move here and get a little bit of a archeroo, which I don't do a very good job of, but I do my best. Everybody's a little different on that. Got my roguefitness.com belt right here, which I'm a fan of. It's got some nice flex to it, but it is a good power belt. So driving those shoulder blades under and down. I probably could have done a better job of that, of uh, just pulling them together a little sharper. And you can kind of see how that kind of changed the arm angle that I have here and here. What it did was uh, my arm before was kind of more starting out about here. And I uh, had an elongated arm. And now I shortened my arm to the best of my ability. I got kind of long arms. I got kind of a long stroke. So here I'm wiggling myself into position. Check out these jacked pecs. Enormous, huge triceps. All right, we're ready to go. So let's see what happens with this 462-pound opening bench press attempt. I like to lift my butt off the bench to unrack the weight. That's always uh, been a move that I've done for a long time. Uh, this helps kind of save my lower back. So I unrack it that way, load the weight in my hands, get the weight pushed out to me a little bit by the uh, liftoff guy. In this case, it's Jesse Burdick. And then from here, I like to be fast and I like to run away from tension. I know that's kind of somewhat opposite of what a lot of you guys hear. But I don't like to have a lot of strain and a lot of, uh, a lot of messing around when it comes to bench pressing. So I bench a little bit lower than where it's comfortable for me. And um, my elbows are always on this side of the barbell. The barbell is the barbell's here and my elbows are to this side of the barbell, toward, more towards my belt than they are towards my face. And I kind of turn the bench press into a little bit of an extension as you can see here. It looks like they're lined up almost directly underneath the barbell, but they're just a little bit this way. They're a little bit tucked inward, not a lot, not doing the gay pterodactyl. Trying to keep the chest up throughout the range of motion. Don't let it sag down. And uh, from here, get a press command from Ed Cohn, the referee. 
and lock it out nice and strong easy weight so let's watch this next attempt I've been also lifting in Olympic shoes um, the reason for that is it's got elevated heel uh, the elevated heel helps to take some stress off of the hips um, any great lifter that you're going to see should but not always but any great bench you're going to see should always have their knee lower than where their hip is on a bench press. Why is that? Because it helps drive everything up. Rather than being totally flat backed here, we're trying to drive everything up through here. So that's the goal. Trying to keep everything up as high as we can through this area here. So this is 501 pounds. This is the most weight I've ever attempted in a raw meat. Pause it, bang it out. Another thing I like to do is I like to just get stuff over with quickly. Um, so this lift, I mean, you can count it up yourself how, on how long it takes, but it takes a pretty short period of time. Lower that thing down quick, get the press command, and get rid of it. There's a couple things I need to do to work on, but uh, I, to, to work on incre increasing that so it's a much bigger lift next time out. I'm going to compete May 19th at Super Training Gym. And the plan is to do around a 540 bench press. And i got to work on my lockout. But I kid you not, I know I'm the inventor of the slingshot. But that's pretty much predominantly all I use in my bench training. I don't do a lot of raw work uh, due to uh, having many injuries over the years. I pretty much utilize the slingshot every chance I get. I do push my raw work as far as I can go for a particular day. And then I add on the slanger slanger. So here we go. I'm going with a bench press. Didn't have any shirts that fit, but was trying to, to knock my buddy Juan off of our uh, ST record board. This is kind of more for fun than anything else, but this is 699 pounds. Um, obviously, I've lifted a lot more than this many, many times in competition, but this is just where I'm at for now and uh, something I'm going to work on increasing uh, because it's not anywhere where I want it to be. This is 699. My best bench in a meet previously is uh, 854 pounds. I benched over 800 pounds many times in competition, and uh, this is going to be something I'm going to work on a lot. I'm going to try to clean this up. So a shirted bench is much, much different than a geared lift, and the problem with me on this particular lift is I do it very similar to my raw lift. Um, I should have taken the weight out this way a little bit more, that way it'd be lined up around here a little bit more. Um, and there's just some flaws where I kind of I kind of have my elbows this way a little bit too much. The elbows should be dropping straight down a little bit more. Uh, in this type of shirt, Phenom shirt, you want your elbows out to really stretch the material, stretch the shirt. And you can see here I'm bound up in kind of a weird way. Uh, not an ideal way, not an optimal way to press the weights back out. The material got folded here and got a little funky. Um, and then I get stuck, and then I rotate the bar this way, which is very common for me. A lot of this stuff is very common for, the, for my particular style and form. Also keep in mind, you know, I am down to 242 pounds now, and, and so the range of motion has increased quite a bit. But in my opinion here, this elbow should be just out just a little bit. This elbow should be out just a little bit. Uh, I would have gotten more shirt. I would have gotten more pop back up. And it would have led to some better results. But instead, here's the results we get. I also lift my head up a lot when I bench uh, in a shirt. And that kind of unfolds the shoulder. The back of my shoulder is crinkled, is screwed, I should say screwed into the bench. But when I lift my head and raise my traps up off the bench press, um, then that shoulder is no longer screwed in quite the way it is. There's also some unevenness and, and uh, balance um, uh, imbalance here. The right side is not as strong as the left side, and it's not as big. You actually see I, the left side's finished. Look at that. The left side is completely done. I've also done this with 887 up at Jesse Burdick's gym, and it still chaps my ass that I never finished that lift. Um, so there's some things the people's coach has to clean up uh, in order to uh, hit, these, uh, hit these benches. Um, but it's going to be done. I'm going to make it happen, and next time out should be benching around 730 or 750. 
Uh, the arm sleeves of this shirt do need to be taken in, but I also I need to pay attention more to my technique, and I also need to work on strengthening a few different things. Uh, one thing I'm going to work on is a lot of back strength and also a lot of board strength, raw board work, and then also on top of that, just more shirted work uh, with better form. So hopefully those tips help you guys out in your efforts to bench more weight, and that is it from supertraining.tv.